I notice false imprisonment as an offense. Never seen that one. Sergeant Keaton, do you want to describe that? Um, yes. That the officers that deal with kids, if it's one of Greg Cooper's cases, if a kid is combined by another kid, that's a charge that could be charged to that aggressive kid. Um, I'm not sure if that was a juvenile case or an adult case. It doesn't rise to the level of kidnapping. Yes. But, uh, no. Any other questions? Under the chief's items for training for the month, uh, well, actually for the spring, personnel have completed training in a variety of subjects since the first of the year. As the commission knows, we try to get these courses in before our peak calls for service period, which will be upon us soon. Some of the classes include traffic crash reconstruction, 80 hours, polio resin capsicum, also known as OC, instructor training, DWI litigation, general instructor training, advanced training and brake testing equipment for crash reconstruction and a first line supervisor school. In June, four officers will attend a two day class sponsored by the Secret Service. And I have tentatively scheduled my three sergeants and a detective to participate in that class, which will be held in Concord. Under matters of interest, the Public Safety Building served as a Carroll County drop-off site for the April 26th prescription drug take-back program. We had two 30-gallon containers filled here in Wolfboro, and uh, I understand that there were over 250 pounds collected in the region. As most know, the intent of this effort is to keep prescription medication from being diverted to unintended recipients and to assure our environment is not further jeopardized by inappropriate disposal. And we thank all those who help in this regard, and Sarah Silk from the Board of Selectmen, uh, it was very instrumental in this and other endeavors. Our central dispatch personnel were recognized on April 18th during 911 Call Takers Week. Our full-time staff consists of Supervisor Neil Lyons and dispatchers Michelle Fullerton, Artie Garland, Ken Paul and Will Riley. Michelle Canty, Mark Washburn, Craig Garland, and Jim Savage round out our part-time crew. Wilparo Central Dispatch is one of only two municipal 24-7 dispatch centers in the county. In 2013, 47,626 calls and or inquiries were handled by this division. As I often note, they are the unsung heroes in the public safety mission and we are grateful for their service. <coughs> and it's a great segue into a notation that <coughs> Central Dispatch's reporting period passed both state and federal technical audits on our spots and NCIC private networks. On the topic of grant updates, we've requested federal reimbursement for bulletproof vests and body armor that were purchased within the past year. We will be seeking approval for 500 gun locks to be distributed to our customers. And we will also be looking into funds for the purchase of an automated external defibrillator for the public safety building. We have learned from the Department of Safety that while our DWI enforcement funds were approved and in place, other initiatives we had planned for will not be funded. And those include extra patrols for crosswalk, pedestrian safety, and speed enforcement. I need one moment, please. We are fast approaching Memorial Day, the unofficial kickoff of summer, and after this winter we look forward to sunshine and warm weather. As in the past, officers will be conducting compliance checks of those businesses that have dispensed alcoholic beverages. If you are a licensed purveyor, reinforce the fact that your wait staff and those store clerks need to check IDs closely. I never get checked anymore, it's a little disappointing, but they say if, you're under, if you look like you're under 30, you should check IDs. <laughs> Plainclothes officers and unmarked vehicles are working grants funded by the Attorney General's office to enforce those laws pertaining to underage drinking and sale of alcoholic beverages to minors. Chief, could I ask a question? Sure. Uh, with regard to the, uh, the 
initiative we had planned for the exit patrols, crosswalk, pedestrian safety, speed enforcement. Is that going to impact on voice and uh, divine? No, not at all. Okay, so we're still going to hire them, right? Yes, they'll be here. Uh, I think we we'll know somewhere they'll be uh, starting probably the 1st of July. We're going to supplement that with uh, patrol officers on foot like we did several years ago. I've been handed a note by Sergeant Keaton from the librarian who wants to speak to the commission about moving the meeting. Uh, people in the library complain they can't attend. I don't mean to interrupt, but... Uh, so he thought it was important. Uh, yes, I have a number of people who are unhappy that they're not able to come in the room, so either we need to be able to let them to line other parts of the wall and sit on the floor, That's or fine. else we Whatever need to... Want. That's fine. All right? Cool. So uh, people can come in and line, line the wall. <laughs> they do like they do everywhere else. Attorney General's Office on a proposal to deal with the many surrendered firearms in our possession. We are also in possession of two vehicles that have been abandoned by their owners. The necessary steps have been taken to notify the registered owners to retrieve the automobiles. On May 19, we will petition the court to have the vehicles awarded to the Department for Disposition, whatever uh, has entails. Uh, I have a couple items on the budgetary updates. Of, Commission may want to hear it on public if you look at that quickly. One matter for public uh, consumption here is in keeping with the town policy and cell phone reimbursement for department heads and other designees, I've requested reimbursement for the lieutenant and uh, the town hall would like the police commission to approve this before proceeding with the expenditure, which would come under uh, general operating supplies is $30 a month. And respectful, respectfully asking the commission to approve this and cause acknowledgement to be forwarded to the town manager's office. Under outreach in conjunction with the facilities career day program, Lieutenant Rondo addressed a group of young people at the Kingswood Youth Center on opportunities in public safety and in the military. The department continues its school-to-work program of Kingswood Regional High School. We have a senior student with an interest in the criminal justice field doing weekly ride-alongs with patrol officers, and she's getting a personal glimpse of what an officer sees and encounters in his or her daily duties. The annual torch run will occur this Saturday, commencing at 9.30 a.m., when representatives of several area law enforcement agencies will meet at Port Hill Road and Center Streets, and run to the public safety building in Wolf Carl. A cookout will follow on the grounds of the police department. Many of our staff volunteer their time in this endeavor. As most folks know, Special Olympics is an international organization that provides training and competition for more than 4.2 million athletes with disabilities. The Wolf Carl Police Benevolent Association will begin its annual fundraising initiative in July. The WPBA is an incorporated charitable organization under the direction of the State Attorney General's Office. This year, the WPBA, among other things, will provide scholarships for two graduating Kingswood Regional High School seniors and will award scholarships to two fourth grade students to attend a two-week summer camp this season. The association is an entirely local endeavor, and we thank our community for its support. Under acknowledgement, 
<laughs> acknowledgments. The caretakers for a senior in Birch Hill Estates sent a thank you card for assistance rendered recently by a member of the department. And we received a complimentary letter from Mr. McDermott of Sandwich, who thanks Officer Mike Strunk and his father, Dave. The McDermott's wife and children were broken down on Route 16 with a flat tire when the strokes happened along, changed the tire and get the family back on the way. Under other topics, the lieutenant and dispatch supervisor were working on an operations order for central dispatch for the upcoming July 4th events. Officer Bois and Devine, the seasonal employees who work downtown, are looking forward to joining us again this summer. Cash donations to the canine program are now around the $7,000 mark. And we are looking into a grant opportunity that may help defray the cost of the purchase and training of the new dog. There may be a donated vehicle in our near future that could potentially free up an administrative car that would easily be converted to a canine vehicle with minimal costs. And the lieutenant will brief the canine committee at the next scheduled <coughs> meeting. And I have those two matters from non public, and that's it, Mr. Chairman, for Chief Sighting. Like I said, so. Yes, um, I just had a couple of items. One was um, relative to Stu's report for DEA. I got the information for this region, and I also received a copy of the DEA's National Prescription Drug Take Back Day report. They have um, had seven take back days, and they've collected over 390 tons of pharmaceuticals. and. The one collection in April of 2014 collected more than two collections a year when they first started doing this back in 2010 and 2011. I would just like to remind the public that our hazardous waste collection spot, Lakes Region Household Hazardous Product Facility at 404 Beach Pond Road, will do prescription drug take backs over the counter on the third Saturday in June and the third Saturday in August. Those are the days that we're allowed to take them because we do have to have a pharmacist and we do have to have a couple of police officers. We will be having our first collection of the season this Saturday. However, we cannot accept prescriptions at that time. And the other uh, item which I mentioned to you, Joe, the other day in my email was on the 14th, um, excuse me, the 19th of April, I attended Wild New Hampshire and talked with uh, Bob Mancini, Fish and Game, and watched two demonstrations with their working dog. And they did um, a demonstration at uh, 10 o'clock and they did one at noontime. They did search, track, and evidence. And um, I will you know, go into some details when I, when I go to the canine meeting, but the thing that was really interesting was they had a fellow throw down his license, his driver's license, and another object on the ground and they had the dog do a search and they snapped a collar on and he was to look for something that fish and game looks for. Would it be fish, whether it would be deer, whether it would be some kind of pheasant or some kind of bird meat. And he immediately found a teeny piece inside a metal container tucked up in a wheel well on a piece of equipment. Then they take that collar off and when they snap on another collar, which makes a distinct sound when you snap it on, that's when he looks for evidence. And before, when he was looking for the, 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 you know, the piece of meat or fish, he had walked all over the grass and walked right by this license and this other piece of uh, paraphernalia from the person's pocket and never paid any attention to it whatsoever. As soon as that evidence collar was snapped around his neck, he picked them right up. And then they did another one with a different collar where he had to look for, he had to do a tracking thing. And uh, I was just really, you know, we've talked about the different roles that our dog might need to do. It was very, very interesting to see how he just went from one function to another, depending on what collar he had. And it was, yes, I thought it was very enlightening. So um, I'll be looking forward to that next meeting. And that's all I have. Thanks. Thanks. Anything else? I'd like to open the meeting. For the public, uh, I want you to please come up to the podium here with your name, your address. You'll have three minutes to speak. Thank you. Hello, my name is Jane O'Toole. I live at 109 Westwood. 
authored the letter of complaint to the police commission and the letter to the editor of the Granite State News regarding Mr. Copeland's offensive comments in a public restaurant. I do acknowledge that it is within his First Amendment rights. Mr. Copeland has publicly acknowledged with no contrition that he made these comments with one exception. Mr. Copeland did not say the N-word in the restaurant, N-word. Mr. Copeland did not use the term nigger in the restaurant. Mr. Copeland used the term effing nigger in the restaurant. <laughs> comments like these, especially coming from an elected public, public official, are not only inexcusable, but it is also, it also unfortunately, terribly unfortunately, reflects poorly on our town. As such, I believe Mr. Copeland cannot serve the community without prejudice and should step down. I close with one question for the commissioner and specifically Mr. Balcony. Mr. Copeland stated in his response to you on this matter, in the letter that he sent to me, he told he said in that letter that it had been accepted, his response had been accepted by the commission. So, Mr. Balboni, does this mean that his comments were merely accepted in and received, or does this mean his comments were acceptable to you? Thank you, of course. Neither Mr. Balboni nor my views uh, coincide with Mr. Copeland's whatsoever. It was not condoned. It is not accepted. Uh, when Mr. Copeland used the term, uh, the email was accepted, you all know that if you receive an email, it's ipso facto received and accepted. But in no way uh, did Mr. Balboni and I, and we had a talk with Mr. Copeland, as I said, condone what he said, and the answer, Ms. O'Toole, is accepted and received. Thank you. My name is <clears throat> Edward Rice, Edward G. Rice. I'm uh, residing at 37 Harbor Way, Unit 13 in Wolf Rock. I'm the interim pastor at All Saints Episcopal Church. Uh, I said my initial mi middle initial is G. It stands for George. I'm named after my father's cousin who died in medical experiments under Adolf Hitler. So am I sensitive to public officials using hate language? I absolutely am. And I think the language Mr. Copeland used was hate language. And if I understand the role of our police department and this commission is to provide for public safety. I was a principal of a school earlier in my career. I couldn't be in the classroom to teach, but it was my job and responsibility to create an environment for learning. Your job, as I understand it, perhaps incorrectly, is to create an environment that enhances and supports public safety. I feel less safe in this community if those remarks are part of our official elected officials and they are responsible for providing public safety.
on our white 125 Pine Hill Road. I find that Commissioner Copeland's comments in public appalling for a public official. And I find his explanation of such to be beyond repugnant. By what right does Mr. Copeland set himself up to decide who among the minorities are not deserving of respect? It is my understanding that every citizen of this country is worthy of respect, especially from an elected official. The worst offender found guilty in a court of law is afforded courtesy and respect, and that is enforced by the court. What makes Commissioner Copeland an exception? What message does he send about Wolfboro? What message does he send about our police department? What message does he send to our police department and to those who might want to join him? was elected to represent all, not just white persons of Wolfboro, but all. <laughs> he is here to serve all members of the police department, not just the white majority. I find Mr. Copeland's conduct and his lack of contrition, his lack of understanding, and his appalling insensitivity disqualifies him from any further service. I say to you today, if you do not have the decency to resign, prepare yourself, because we will institute recall. You Kingswood, and I'd like to make a couple remarks tonight about the Commissioner's racial remarks. And ahead of time, I want to say that I embrace fully your First Amendment right to say what you've said, and I hope everyone here in the room will embrace my First Amendment right to say a really horrible racial term, because this is a term we need injected into this discourse here. From what I've heard, Wolfero seems to have come to a consensus on the despicable nature of Vice Commissioner Copeland's racial remarks this past March. However, it's not simply the icky nature of what he's saying that constitutes the greater problem with him remaining in office. It's the implications about that later comment about Mr. Obama meeting his imagined criteria for the use of the word nigger. Shall we listen to his second more pernicious <laughs> comment again? I believe I did use the word, the N-word, in reference to the current occupant of the White House. For this, I do not apologize. He meets and exceeds my criteria for such. I'd like to ask you, Mr. Copeland, what do you mean by this? First, first thing I'd like to call to attention is the passive-aggressive nature of, quote, the current occupant of the White House. <laughs> Are you willing to acknowledge that these the twice elected president of the United States, and a man who was elected twice by the States of America? The second question, of course, what could you possibly have been thinking when you made reference to the criteria for nigger, for the criteria for hate speech? Pardon me, but I see in your quote a bad picture of New Hampshire. I see the potential for America to see New Hampshire as a state of scared, enfeebled, old white men. <laughs> old white men who've watched the rise to power of the most influential white black men of our generation and see in. A bitty Negro who fails to fall into the subservient, step-and-fetch-it model that you so seem to be telling here, sir. And that's not who we are. 
That's not who we are in New Hampshire. That's not who we are in Wolfboro. And I'm offended to watch my turn. I'd love to know, when did Mr. Obama enter the fold of being a nigger? Was it when he went from a white, a middle class, lower middle class background to attend Harvard University? Was it when he got 8 million people in this country health care insurance? Was it when he came out in support of marriage rights for everyone in this country? Or was it simply when he had the temerity to rise above his station as a black man? Your comment that there's some criteria a black man has to avoid lest he be qualified as a nigger portrays you as racist far better than using the term ever could have. Given the attitudes that you, Mr. Copeland, have so clearly broadcasted, showing blatant disrespect toward the office of the presidency, towards our African-American countrymen, and collectively toward the members of this community that you've so ill-represented, it's time that you take a semi-respectable vow from public life and resign your post on the commission. <laughs> to the public eye, and it's not a face that I want representing my town, it's not a face that these folks want representing their town, and it's not a face we want representing our justice system. Please, Mr. Copeland, you've revealed your incapability to hold our office. Please do us a favor and come up to this microphone right now and apologize for you, what you've said. And then if you really want to go through with it, please resign tonight. Thank you. Treadwell Lane in Wolfboro. And as you can see, and I'll turn around so you can fully see, I have three resign signs. <laughs> <laughs> takes care of us in a hundred percent manner. I feel that this small town has no need of a police commission. That's all I have to say. King Shabazz of the new Black Panthers. I think this man should re resign from life. All this man did was express his displeasure about 
the president, not the president's office. The president, the man who was in the office. But he reiterated. And he did it in democratic New Hampshire. Oh my God. If this was Republican New Hampshire, uh, wouldn't be any problem. So, the overthrow of the government, he advocated his displeasure with this person, and he did use a slur, and so maybe he should have said something else that wouldn't have gotten such a big response. Where's the response to this guy about killing white babies and hating white people? Where's the big meetings about this? He's an elected official, do we hold his feet to the fire? My name is Richard Stockton. I live in Prokoro on Governor Wentworth Highway. Let him who has no sin cast the first stone. There are times when we all say something that offends someone else, as Mr. Copeland may have done. Why is the N-word so offensive to so many people? I got three minutes, remember? Sir, please say the word then, if it's not so offensive. Yeah, that's right. So, many people. Are you younger people? I'm reading this because I want to get all of my thoughts in. I don't want to forget about it. Thank you. Um, are you younger people aware that when Mr. Copeland and I were in school, our reading included Tom Sawyer and Huck Finn, in which the N-word was regularly used? Are you offended people aware that many of you often use words offensive to others? I have been married for 44 years. When I hear the term gay marriage, I am offended. Gay means happy. The homosexuals stole that word, and thieves are never happy. They are not married either. They are not married either. Check with the creator of marriage if you doubt me. Many things that are legal are still wrong. I am also offended when I hear people throw around the term Jesus Christ. He is my best friend. God is also offended by that. Once again, check with him if you doubt me. This should be a two-way street. We should all be protected by the First Amendment, but none of us are guaranteed that we will never be offended by someone else's words. Time to grow up and figure out what really matters. <laughs> Oh, yeah, Massachusetts. Oh, yeah. You are better than us. Yeah, it's a very good Respect both sides. Howdy. My name is uh, Daniel Anthony Lyons. I'm, a, I go, I'm from Portsmouth, New Hampshire. I go to school at Brewster Academy. Um, it has been my honor to uh, be able to speak at Brewster at many all schools. Um, and I believe that you know, service to the American people and the people is the most important thing. And as an elected official, you must respect all the members of your society and we're all a family and you can never ever disrespect your family and you can't do things to you know harm them and hurt them i'm very offended by uh, what many of the other republican people who have spoken here today speaking as a republican i am not racist at all no, no. i don't believe in any of the things they said and i truly hope that the rest of the people in this nation and this room realize that not all Republicans and not all people are hold such primitive and ignorant values. God bless. Amen. Hi, my name is Jim Roulard. I live at 4 Olson Lane. I'm an angry white man. I'm a, um, uh, an independent voter. 
I am angry at some of the terrible things that have been said about uh, President Obama today. He's my president. I didn't intend to speak. Um, all of my ancestors were Republican, um, and all the American ones. Uh, I don't know if the ones were capitalists or what. They fled uh, Russia, sorry, they fled Lithuania to avoid fighting for the Tsar. They fled France to avoid fighting, being impressed in um, Napoleon's armies. But in any case, uh, I'm sorry to hear people defending Mr. Copeland because I think his, uh, his, his statements are reprehensible and just puzzling to, an, to another angry old man. <laughs> Beverly Woods. I live at 401 Hayes Hill Road. And I just have one very brief comment, and that is that the language of prejudice, which is represented by that word, the operative term is prejudice, prejudged. There has no place in our police commission or our police department, no prejudging. John Morthen Struble. I live at 38 Elm Street in Wolfboro. I'm a teacher at Kingsman High School and I have the honor to be the only openly gay teacher at Kingsman High School as well as the first. One half of the first same-sex marriage will be celebrated in Wolfboro. In a way, I'm glad, Mr. Copeland, that you said what you did publicly. And the reason is because of my many African-American friends that I've known in various states throughout the country, those who have lived both in the South and the North have consistently expressed the opinion to me that they'd rather live in the South where these attitudes are up front. And they know who the enemy is, and they don't have people who are harboring these attitudes in secret. So in a way, I appreciate you coming out and saying directly, so we all know where you stand. But with all due respect to the people of the family, I think they missed the point. This incident dovetails with my 11th grade honors classes wrapping up their study of Huckleberry Finn and racism in the 19th century. And provided actually a great <coughs> subject for 50 very intelligent young people to discuss this issue. Um, public officials certainly have a right to their opinion. Teachers have a right to their opinion. Judges have a right to their opinion. Police officers have a right to their opinion. What we don't have is a right to allow our prejudices to dictate our public behavior as public figures. If I had used language of the sort that you have used in a classroom, I would not expect to keep my job for a day. chose to run for police commissioner and when you chose to accept your victory in that election, you chose to be held to a higher standard of public behavior than the average citizen. I would suggest that your behavior in this instance is a gross failure of that higher standard of public behavior. But I'm at least grateful that I know where you stand on these issues. And I would very much like to hear you answer the question asked to you earlier by my student Michael Blumen. What exactly are your criteria <coughs> referenced in your work? I'd like to hear an answer to that. I think a lot of us are We're not going to hear that at the moment. Mm -hmm. Why not? So, when can we expect it then? Mm -hmm. Do you need sure, to make a point that's This is the perfect forum. <laughs> Thank you for the opportunity to speak. My name is Robert Hogan, Jr. I live at 232 McManus Road. I've been here since the fifth grade, uh, off and on for the last 40 years. And I've come to know Wolfboro as a hospitable town, a town that welcomes everyone, a town that depends on tourism. And while I won't repeat Although I agree with the moral outrage about what has been spoken in, uh, in the restaurant, 
even more so what has been defended in an official communication to the police commission uh, as acceptable behavior. Um, I'd like to turn to a more practical aspect of it uh, without diminishing the moral outrage that I feel and that is being felt around the state now that this has made the union leader and statewide news. We depend on tourism. We depend on our reputation as a hospitable, welcoming community. We don't need to be known for what Mr. Copeland has expressed and has come to represent. <coughs> It will be damaging to our local businesses. It will be damaging to our people. It will be damaging to the students we raise in this community. I would hate to think that a boycott of Wolfboro was a result of a damaging reputation of our community. It would be a horrible thing that would take decades to recover from. So, I would ask you, Commissioner Copeland, to please put aside what is best for you and do what is best for Wolfboro. Put an end to this and resign today. point is a point of order for the chairman. Um, I know of at least 12 people that could not come today who wanted to uh, because of the time. So I would respectfully request, and I don't know what the procedure is, to request or to suggest uh, that the next meeting, if this sh should continue to go on given the heightened public interest, uh, an accommodating time for people who work nine to five uh, that something special be scheduled. That's just a suggestion because, you know, if I know about 12, there's probably 10 for everyone that I didn't hear about. So thank you very much. Welcome. My name is Ethan Hipple. I'm the Director of Parks and Recreation for the Town of Wolfboro. I'm here representing my department and all of the people who take part in our programs. We have many types of people who take part in our programs. Black, white, gay, straight, able-bodied, disabled, and Wolfboro welcomes everybody. So I just want that clear for the record. And I think it's a sad day I think it's a sad day when an elected official would let loose with this hateful speech, but I think it's a great day for Wolfboro when the community stands up. doesn't allow this kind of hateful speech in this town. Thank you. Come on down, Roger. Thank you. Uh, my name is Roger Murray. I live at 111 Brackett Road, and I think we need to focus on what really is the issue here today. It's not about Mr. Copeland's First Amendment rights. It's not about his views on the president. The question is whether his comments disqualify him from further service on the commission, and I believe that it does. If the members of the police commission believe the commission serves an important function, then action needs to be taken. His continuance on the board will only serve to hurt the commission. And not only will it hurt the commission, it also reflects on the town of Wolfboro as well, and we deserve better than that. Percy Drive and I moved to New Hampshire from Massachusetts um, when I was in the third grade. I'm now 42 years old 
and I have come back after serving my country in the U.S. Navy oh, wow. during Desert Storm and Desert Shield to this wonderful town to raise my family and raise my children to believe that everybody should be created equal. Race, man, woman, no matter what. And I don't feel that anybody that believes otherwise, even though you have every right to voice your opinion and say what you want to say, when you say it in public, that makes the elected, the people that elected you think that that's how you're going to handle yourself throughout. And that wants us to not have you represent us. The way I see it, and somebody can correct me if I'm wrong, the police commission um, is, um, works with the chief in order to run uh, the police department. And I don't feel that that's a good representation. I learned firsthand in the U.S. Navy, if you are an officer or you are somebody when they do something wrong, it rolls downhill and it affects everything that's done. And I do not want this to affect the wonderful town that I came back to and that I love, Wolfboro. I raise my kids here and I expect to stay here and not have these issues. There are children from, you know, it's a shame to some degree because we're in the North, we don't have as much racial diversity though I've seen a lot of that changing. This is the 20th century, 21st century, and we need to make sure that anybody that doesn't feel that other people are welcome or other people are doing things correctly or not because of their race only um, is not in any kind of office. Thank you. My name is David Baker. I live at 53 Elm Street in the city, uh, and I'd like to speak uh, today. Uh, I've uh, only been up here about seven years, and uh, I've seen Mr. Copeland on a number of occasions uh, every week. I have never heard him say, other, with the exception of a comment about uh, Mr. Obama, I've never heard him in any way uh, say anything that would lead me to believe that he was prejudiced against anyone of any race. Uh, and I just like to point out, uh, I, I know this is not going to be a national holiday, uh, beat up the commissioner day or something, but, but I see this big turnout. We had a U.S. Senator, the longest serving person in the Senate, Senator Burr, who was a member of the Ku Klux Klan, who was a Grand Cluxton. I would have liked to have seen a turnout like this to ask him to resign. They did. That's all I have to say. This will just take a moment. I'm Brian Bloomer. I'm, I'm from 15 to Old Lakeview Terrace in Wolfboro. I would like the commissioners to ask for his resignation tonight on behalf of the people of the Good afternoon, my name is Tim Caravello from 19 Eagle Trace. Uh, I'm brand new to Wolfboro, haven't even been here a year, so this is my first uh, real experience of live for your day, I guess. Um, <laughs> I just want to say I'm surprised that it hasn't been brought up yet. Uh, Los Angeles Clippers owner Donald Sterling um, very recently made some comments, uh, not in the public, but was recorded, um, went viral across the world, uh, was asked to never take part in an NBA uh, game or facility or anything to do with the Clippers again, and this gentleman owned the team, and he is a private sector uh, person. Uh, this is a public office. And I just want to simply say there's absolutely no room for this anywhere in the public office. Thank you. Hi, my name is Paul Green. I live at 7 Sandstrom Road here in Wolfboro. <coughs> I've had nothing but the utmost respect for the policemen in this town and the way that they take care of things around here. And I've trusted them. My problem now is that with a commissioner that is seemingly very racist, 
is that attitude in the police department as well? How many people, how many policemen, how many public officials in our town have this same feeling that they would brazenly use that word? I'm concerned about that. I think probably everybody else here is very concerned. Do we have a clean police department or do we have one that is racist? Thank you. Anybody else? Just one thing. Uh, my name is Judith Hatchie. I live in 45 North Main. Um, I just want to say, I don't care what your political affiliation is. I don't care whether you're gay or straight or black or white. I don't care who our president is. You do not respect, disrespect the office of the president. In public, in our public there is no room for disrespecting that office. Especially by a public official. Please resign. Good afternoon. My name is Jamie Myers. I live on 21 Fire Tuck Way. I'm the academic coordinator of social studies at the high school. I'm very proud of my student, Michael Bloomer, and my colleagues. <laughs> you certainly have added to our curriculum here at Kingswood. <laughs> And the value that we hold at Kingswood is that um, we value tolerance. We teach tolerance, and um, that's what we try to provide for our students and an important lesson. And I think you've pretty much you know, thrown that under the bus. So for those who ask you to resign, I want to um, support that and um, think it's the only appropriate thing for you to do. I'm Charles Shields. I'm from Alton. Do I have permission to speak, sir? Since I'm out of, from out of town. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I grew up in uh, Roxbury, Mass. Those six decades, and uh, everybody was the same. When I was a little kid, I used to see the uh, OD staff car come. Sometimes go to Szczynski's house. The time go to Jackson's house to the O'Donnell's house. These guys all served together, and I served with all these guys too, and never once, I, I never hear that word used. And these guys were tough guys, but they didn't use bad language like that. And that's all I have to say. Thank you. Before you close it, do you think that you could make a statement regarding your position? I'd like to speak to him because we're in a wheelchair. Oh, I'm sorry. My name is Dennis Davey, D A V E Y. I live uh, on Beach Pond Road in Wolf Road. I, uh, I, uh, when you look at me, you, you look uh, at a, a man who has uh, done 40 years uh, in the law enforcement business. Uh, originally as a New Hampshire trooper, and uh, secondarily and lastly as a, as a full-time prosecutor. Uh, far more importantly than, than any of that or anything I could purport to be, uh, I, uh, my wife and I are the parents of three uh, first-grade young adults, uh, two of whom have uh, uh, elected a few years ago to, and successfully so, to uh, do something that I, I have admitted on numerous occasions, and I'll do it right now in front of all you people, something that I didn't think I'd ever have the, have the courage to do, and that is they... Uh, they adopted, uh, uh, collectively speaking, three Haitian children. Uh, uh, our baby girl, as I like to call our youngest, uh, and her husband, who already had a uh, wonderful uh, daughter, white daughter, uh, went through all the, the pain and suffering and perseverance of uh, 
that was attended to the process of, uh, of adopting a child from Haiti when they did it. And, uh, and he's wonderful and he's five and he's been here for two years. And on the same flight uh, with his new mother and father uh, was, I should strike that, were two little girls ages uh, nine and six. And uh, they are, uh, are two, two of our granddaughters and they were adopted by our only son of the three kids and his wife. They already had uh, three kids and when they heard about the second child being a natural sister to the younger of the two, uh, their immediate response was, uh, well, we'd be glad to take this little girl's sister as well uh, if uh, that could be done. They did. So nowadays, uh, three of our nine grandchildren are just as black as black can be. <laughs> and uh, I'm here to tell you, I, I, uh, I don't, I don't uh, favor, not as my wife, uh, any one of those, uh, these wonderful kids over another. And that uh, therefore precludes any consideration of uh, uh, prejudice one way or the other, black versus white, uh, these great kids. I got a call from my daughter last night about this, and uh, we talked about it uh, fairly briefly. When I assured her I'd come to the meet, I offered to. She didn't even ask me to. It's a nature. And uh, when I refresh my memory, as I'd read this relevant material in the newspaper, in the weekly paper, I was drawn again and again to this sentence, however short, but a phrase, part of a sentence that it reads, I am not phobic. I am not phobic. Well, I, 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 but I have but a college degree under my belt uh, and a fair amount of world experience, I hope. And uh, everywhere I've been, phobic has uh, had everything to do with fear. And I don't think this, I don't think anybody's concerned about uh, uh, Mr. Copeland's uh, sense of fear about anything. I don't think that, I think that's foreign and altogether unrelated to the business at hand. You think what is uh, salient and uh, center stage in all this business is whether or not he is uh, uh, racist in, in the darkest of terms, and, uh, which uh, sanitized version, I guess, is prejudice to some degree. And I would submit that he's uh, demonstrated beyond uh, reasonable doubt that he's both. <laughs> now, uh, you know, it, it, I would also suggest that when, when we uh, use acronyms and, and initials and little uh, catchphrases and words rather than say the actual word, there's something wrong with that word trying to apply vanilla to it, but it's still sour. And that's what's at the heart of it. And uh, so even he uh, refers to, and in fact, he even qualifies, uh, if we believe what we read from the paper, uh, he says something the likes of, I may have used the N-word. He doesn't even in, a, uh, in an unqualified, uh, uh, not at all disingenuous way, say, yes, I said that. But then he goes about defending it. And he, again, phobic, phobic, phobic. Which has nothing to do with it. And uh, let's not uh, forget uh, the, uh, the adjective in all this. Effin. It has that same trait at one, one initial. And then we'll abbreviate the daylights out of it. It won't sound so bad, but everybody, everybody will know what we're saying. Uh, still a bad word. Uh, and I, I, I would suggest that if you throw two, uh, one that smacks of poor judgment and, and a, a lack of uh, discernment, uh, taste, up against a, uh, a hateful word, uh, it's, a, it's a pretty lethal combination. Now I, I don't, I hate the thought of people uh, thinking that this uh, mentality uh, that I extrapolate from all of that I've read uh, is fairly attributable to the uh, to the majority 
or any significant number of people for that matter in Wolfboro. I, I think I know Wolfboro would be quite unlike that. I can tell you that if I, uh, uh, in the same uh, atmosphere in a restaurant, I've eaten in many restaurants being far from home on many, many occasions, <clears throat> sometimes for weeks at a time, job related. Uh, but uh, if I were the, uh, uh, the uh, sorry soul to whom these words uh, this clever little phrase was attributed, and I admitted one way or another, either altogether or in a, an equivocating kind of way. Uh, but at any rate, if uh, my, the people I worked for believed I had uh, used that uh, lovely language, uh, F and N word, uh, uh, I, 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 there's no doubt in my mind I'd been fired. None. And that, that goes for the first year when uh, a young trooper has uh, uh, little or no rights in terms of survivorship, right up to the end. I, uh, I could tell stories about people who uh, took some significant hits for doing far less uh, where I come from. And, and I don't uh, regret that. I think it should have been that way. I, I, never, I never heard of anything quite like this, as old as I am. Uh, but uh, I'm getting the eyeball from my wife now. That means I'm just a sweet star. <laughs> the other, another thing that troubled me. <laughs> when, when it came time, uh, or, or when it was decided that it was time uh, for a, a responsorial sound, and uh, Mr. Copeland uh, elected to uh, write to Ms. O'Toole um, by email, and that's all been published, publicized. Uh, I must say that uh, the the, uh, the attitude that I took from that response was more troublesome than the original business at hand. To me, it smacked of uh, entitledism. I'm entitled to say that. And everybody loves to wave the uh, First Amendment flag around, and it's near and dear to me. And God knows I've said some uh, unpopular things in a few courtrooms over the years. But I've meant them. I thought that they, uh, they served good purpose, and they had everything to do with my doing my job. And not everybody had to agree with me, and God knows they never would. But. Uh, and nonetheless, uh, it's very injurious. Uh, many self-inflicted wounds came from that uh, response. It only made matters worse. And then I was disconcerted. And I don't even know these men. Uh, and, and I don't bear them any umbrage. I'm just trying to stick to the business at hand here. Uh, when Mr. Uh, Balboni, uh, when I read things attributed to him, like the likes of, uh, this is an all blown out of proportion. He's a good man, he's done a lot for the town. I don't dispute that, that, that last part, those, those last parts. Again, I don't know the man. But that doesn't give him or anybody else a ticket to make such despicable utterances. So, uh, with, with no hatred in me uh, about this man uh, at all, I think uh, this is what he ought to do. Yeah. I'll make you say it on what you do, please. Would you like to speak? I would, okay. yes. Um, I, I um, lost some sleep last night figuring out if I was going to speak or not and what to do. Name? Name. Oh. Shelly has been laying, uh, live on Junebug Lane. I am speaking because I'm steeped in raising two young children, one who's seven, and he is discovering words and um, differences and all that good stuff. And I spend night and day um, holding him accountable to his words and to his actions I spend night and day trying to hold myself accountable to my words and my actions. I am by no means perfect. Um, 
However, I try really, really hard to teach him every day. I try very hard to give respect to everybody, I believe, from the bottom of my heart. No matter how different somebody is from me, they deserve respect. I try very hard, very hard, to um, teach my seven-year-old male that he is to treat everybody with respect, no matter what they look like, what they feel, whether they're the same or different. Um, and I, I, I hold myself accountable, I hold him accountable, so I sat there thinking, I also, you know, steeped in trying to raise good kids, steeped in reading all sorts of books about how important it is that us adults are positive role models for our little ones. I couldn't just sit um, by and not um, speak and agree with everybody who feels that you should be held accountable for your actions. Um, it, it, it felt like you were at one point held accountable in your response. Um, I wouldn't have been okay if my seven-year-old responded in that way. So I feel like I need to let you know, as a role model to my child, um, I'm not okay with that. Thankfully, I wasn't sitting in that restaurant with my child, um, because if we were and he would have overheard the, the, the language you were using, we would have been having some really difficult conversations. Thankfully, this, thus far, I don't think he's been exposed to that kind of language. and. I'm, I'm hoping it'll stay that way. I love Wolfboro. We moved here three years ago because of the positive um, people and the educated folk and intelligence here. So I, I don't feel like your words were very intelligent and um, nor accountable. My name is Rob Houseman. I live at 19 Pleasant Street. I've been here 18 years. I am a father, a parent, a spouse. My wife works at Brewster. My two kids are there. One's graduating. One's going to graduate. They've had the opportunity to have a racially diverse uh, school year, school years at Brewster because it is what it is. The comments made, in my opinion, that this community as a whole affects the function of the department. And I ask you, Mr. Coker, to resign. At this time, we're going to close the public meeting and go to non public. I want to thank you all for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. Bye bye. Thank you. They're going into the non-public. Oh. We, we close the non-public non meeting. Uh, uh, non-public minutes of 5, 15, 14. The sale by at least two-thirds of the votes as required by law. So now I'm going to go into the public meeting. Talk. The topics discussed were collective bargaining, liquidation, internal practice of the police department, and personnel. Any questions? Yes. I did have a question. I noticed before uh, when I was in the first meeting that you did not properly enter into non-public? That is correct. So that was corrected and will be in the minutes? Yes. Did you take a roll call vote? Yes. Thank you. What part of the last part of the meeting, uh, what part of the agenda that you just mentioned pertains to the last part of the meeting uh, about the commissioner's public statements? Where does that fall in your We agenda? haven't talked about that. Okay. Yeah, to be honest with you, we haven't. Okay, thank you. Are you going to? Is there going to be any decision making in the near future? Yes. I guess you don't talk about that any further. Right? I can't. Okay. Can we discuss it? I, I don't. I don't. Know. I may be under the other procedures, so forgive me for the part. Did you schedule a meeting to discuss that? No, we haven't yet. Yes. Will you schedule a meeting? Yes. When is the earliest? I don't push me. <laughs> I'll let you know. 
I get your phone number. Anything else? I, I've never been to one of these meetings, so I don't know how it That's operates. Right. Relax. And I missed the first, what, two hours? <laughs> um, got ba I got out of work as early as I could and, and drove back to town. Um, my question is, I, I've been reading all of this online and um, found out about it through Facebook. I wasn't in the restaurant when the comment was said, so um, I applaud Ms. O'Toole for bringing it to the, uh, the light in the public. My concern is wrapping this in the protection of freedom of speech when your position is to oversee the police department. If it were a police officer off-duty, John Doe, at a restaurant downtown and felt justified that that word, which is verbal violence, applied to somebody that they disliked, and a citizen overheard it and came to you as commissioners and said, I'm concerned that this officer is not neutral. I'm concerned that this officer would not be for the protection of every citizen because this officer feels that any human being deserves that label. If you do not like the politics of the current president and you call him I can't say the word. You call him an a-hole. You're not referring to his race. When you use the n-word, that is racial. That is not political. And in a position of power where you are overseeing the policies and practices of the officers who are here to serve and protect all of the citizens of our town, then you, sir, should resign. Because what you have done now, would you have put that in your campaign? Would you have proudly stood by that prior to the vote? I don't believe you would have. And there is no amount of paint and flowers and flags that can beautify the oldest summer resort in America to cover this ugly stain. Campbell Road, and I am the Copeland's next door neighbor. And I've known the Copeland's since we moved here about 10 years ago, and probably um, one of the closest friends in terms not only our location, but close to the Copeland's. The Copeland's are like family to us. We share many evenings together, either on their patio having drinks or they're over at our house. And we have lots of conversations, and a lot of them are very political. I want to tell you about this family. Not only are they a good family to their children, uh, Bob being a good father and parent to his two daughters, and Carla, his wife, being a supporter of many functions here in the town. Not only the Huggins Hospital, the Humane Society, and a lot of their waking hours go to spending efforts into this town. Bob also sp sponsors many numerous places here financially with his generosity that helps support a lot of the functions in the town. You go to a concert or an art show and they pass out a leaflet, you'll come the back of a leaflet and you'll see Bob Copeland's name there. That's the kind of people they are. Bob's no racist. Bob may have spoken, you know, out of context here and overheard in a private conversation, but this is no way to, to judge him. He's not a racist, he's a good person. And I was here in the first meeting, and I could have swear that the aisle should have, been, should have been on this side of the wall, because everybody on this side of the aisle were wearing stickers, they were plaques hang, uh, in behind the chairs here. Awful to see that kind of a thing at a meeting. They're, you know, they, they, 
the people jump on situations because they say, you know, I'm going to join the party. But you don't know the other side of the coin here. And I know Bob has been pretty silent here, and a lot of people have been silent, but I'm not afraid to stand up for Bob, because I know Bob. Bob's a good person. He's not a racist. He, uh, he has his political issues, and he's free to speak his, his political issues as much as he wants, like any of us can. So I think you need to think about this family, what they contribute to the, the town here, and the efforts that, and the special skills that Bob has in helping the police commission here. And I think you need to very carefully think about the good side and not just this one thing that was overheard. And don't weigh it on them. Think clearly about what your decisions are. Right. Sir, I applaud that you stand up for your buddy. I really do. Thank you. Do you approve of the word nigger? I don't like the word nigger. Why is that? I don't use it. Why is that? You know something? I'm going to tell you something. Years ago, my dad uh, was a dentist. And he came out of uh, dental school. And he tried to get a job. And in his time, he had considerable difficulty in getting a job. So what did he do? He changed the spelling in his name. And my, my spelling in my name, of course, is the name that he chose. Why did he do that? Because there was a lot of anti-Semitism in those days. And it was very difficult for him to succeed and raise a family and to pursue his dental practice. So you wouldn't be happy with somebody so, so, a kite coach. Oh, hold on. So a lot of that existed in that time. And today we're much better off in dealing with anti-Semitism and a lot of racial issues. But somehow there's still slangs around. And those slangs are not the kind of thing we want to hear. And I agree with you, we don't want to hear that. But it doesn't make a person prejudiced. It doesn't make them racial. The use of the word nigger makes them prejudiced. I don't think so. You have never I, 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 I don't think so. I think there's a difference. The FBI in five minutes. Anybody else? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, Nick Spinner with Channel 9. Um, you guys said you're not going to make any comment tonight or you're going to schedule a meeting later on. You hadn't said when. But what can you say to the town in the meantime to comfort them or to calm them down until a decision is made? Well, obviously, it's very heated. Well, I know it's heated. I mean, we are definitely going to have a meeting. Uh, with the three of us, we will solve the problem. All I can tell you. It will be a public meeting, sir? No. We'll have a public meeting after that. Hi, I'm uh, Bob Hogan, Minister Road. Um, I just want you to be aware that this issue has been written about in the San Francisco Gate. It's probably all over the country by now. Um, Please make haste because our reputation is being smirched. I understand that, sir. All over. Um, and we, we really can't wait for a resolution much longer. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Yes, ma'am. My name is Michelle Rapalowski Hudson. I live here in Wolfboro and I teach at Mr. Cabin. I believe that the adults in this community need to be positive health and role models for our students. This gentleman's comment, this man's comment, he doesn't earn the title of gentleman. This man's comments are racist and bigoted. And I don't care if they were said in a private conversation, but they have no place in the town position. This makes me feel unsafe. It makes me concerned for the safety of my friends, my family, my community members, and my students. It's inappropriate, and he needs to be. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Uh, I'm Christy Bowers, and we're on my love gate. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Y
I lived on my Gate Lane in Wolfboro, and I think on an individual basis, you might be the most wonderful person to go to a barbecue with, as said by your friend. You might be able to help somebody at a hospital or your wife, but you have demonstrated the use of a racially charged bird, which is not slang, it is a slur. Let's make that clear. It's a bit, uh, it has a history of causing injury and harm, usually hatred toward a person who's black. By using such a word, such a slur, I don't, I've lost my trust in you. I don't feel that you, in your racial intolerance, which is reflected in that word, can see to it that our law enforcement officers are unbiased and impartial as they deal with the public. And that is so important. I mean, you can think what's happened this year in so many cases around the country. We have seen how people have been singled out just because of the color of their skin. Being black is not crime. Having black skin is not crime. But across our country, we've seen these wannabes. We've seen law enforcement in New York City stop and frisk simply by stereotyping negatively and profiling negatively people because of the color of their skin. We have seen our prisons in this country fill up with black individuals who have maybe only been caught with possessing marijuana they were not fined, they were sent to jail. Our, our country's jails and prisons are bulging with these people in other states because of their system and they have lost, in some states it's considered a felony and they've lost the right to vote for a lifetime. What has happened is that those, in some of those states, they single out areas, inner city areas, certain areas and they look for people with crack. They don't look for people with cocaine in the suburbs who are white. They stop and frisk in New York City and that there's been an end to it because of the rally, but they were stopping and frisking people only in certain areas of New York City and because of the rally, because people stood up, that has ended. But it comes up in black families because of the history we have in the United States. And I would just hope that you consider resigning, enjoy the community, enjoy the nature, enjoy the chipmunks, but understand you're not a private individual, you're a police commissioner in a public health office. And it's said in caring and love and just a watchfulness, just a watchfulness that I just want everything to go right, okay? And it's just something we all can do if we think this through. Thank you. This is very entertaining, and thank you all. You'll, you'll have a decision. Uh, okay, we'll make a motion. Make a motion to adjourn. Adjourn. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? So moved. Okay.